Hey, well, hi Chris. Um, first of all, congratulate you on the papers you just had coming out in polymer chemistry. Um, perhaps I can ask you, what was the uh, most significant aspect of, of the work that you had in the paper? Well, in this paper, um, we took raft polymers and we converted uh, the thiocarbonyl thioene groups into uh, hydroxy terminal group groups so um, that the polymer would lose all its uh, sulfur and you would have a narrow polydisperse uh, polymer with simply a hydroxy cap, no sulfur anymore and it's uh, most significantly used for switching the mechanism of the polymerization. So you prepare your first polymer graft, then switch it to a hydroxy functional polymer, and then you can use it, for example, as a macro initiator for a, a ROM, uh, so uh, for ring opening polymerization processes. Yeah, was that the main reason for doing the work? That was the main reason for doing the work, for making sulfur-free polymers with raft and using these as macro initiators for ROP uh, reactions. And what do you think the overall impact of this work will be? Well, we are hoping, I mean it's just been just come out, we've just uh, submitted a paper on, on, on the switch from RAF to ROP, and uh, we would be hoping that uh, many people would uh, use the OH functionality as a, as a functional handle to, for example, uh, introduce other groups and uh, make use um, of the sulfur-free nature of the polymers, and we were also actually hoping that um, industry would be quite interested in this because often the problem that we get encountered with in, in raft chemistry is um, the removal of the raft input and how do we get it completely clean and we think this is a very neat and versatile way of removing the raft input from the polymer because it's a it's a it's a one part reaction all you have to do is you have to dissolve your your raft polymer and thf throw a bit of air behind and stir it for let's say a few hours at room temperature then you add a reducing agent, triphenylphosphine, and you precipitate your polymer, and you've got uh, your h cap polymer, so it's quite simple. That's fantastic. Perhaps I can ask you about uh, the, the conference round. What, what do you think the best talk has been in Macro 2010? Well, I haven't been for a long time at the conference, um, since I just arrived last night, but I liked uh, Ludwig Leibler's uh, plenary this morning. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah. What, what's your favorite thing about polymer chemistry, the journal? Uh, what I really love about this journal is, is, is the vibrance of it and its focus on actual chemistry. Um, and uh, I think we've got a great set of authors who's already published, who've already published in this journal. Um, we are starting to get very nice uh, citations. We've got a wide, wide coverage of the chemistry. Many people have told me, and I, I fully agree with that, that it's really dedicated to chemistry um, and synthetic processes. And I think this, this makes it quite unique. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll make a big impact with that journal. Perhaps I can ask you about your recent review on mass spectrometry of polymers. That's obviously grown in importance over the last 10 years, and you describe it so really well in the review. Where do you think it's going to go in the next five or 10 years? Well, um, as we've said in this, in, in, in this review, um, we think that uh, mass spectrometry uh, has its great future when coupled to chromatographic techniques. Um, EC is suited for this since it's a, a liquid state process. So coupling it to ECC, SEC, um, getting absolute molecular weight uh, distribution from it, using as a, as a calibrant, a calibration method for the SEC, but also for the deconvolution of uh, complex mixture compositions, um, it, it, it will rise. So these coupled methods are really um, the growing field for, for polymer mass spectrometry. Um, of course, direct infusion methods will, will, will be important and are certainly important for for MALDI, uh, where coupling is more, more difficult and you'd have to have like a spotting procedure to, to fractionate the samples that come out of the chromatography before. But um, I, I would think these coupled methods really um, will make a big impact. Um, another um, important um, um, area, and here are also the, the mass spectrometry developers are asked, is to, to push forward into the extension of the mass ranges that we can observe, especially with, with ECMS, which I think has some uh, definite advantages over MALDI, as it's a much softer ionization, uh, pro, uh, ionization protocol than uh, we have in MALDI. So many of the living radical uh, polymers can be much better ionized and analyzed with uh, ECMS. So overall, I think, and this is an important point to reinforce, that uh, mass spectrometry still is underutilized in, um, in, in polymer chemistry, and I think people should strongly look at, at mass spectrometry detectors for their, for their SEC. And um, since many of these detectors have come down in price uh, quite significantly, if you don't look at an Orbi trap or an FTICR detector, but if you look at um, quadrupole ion traps, you, you're up there 
can get one with, with like 150,000 euro investment. So it's not so huge anymore. And I really encourage people to, to use this uh, more frequently. That's fantastic. Thanks for talking to us, Chris.